Welcome back to our series where we use five charts to explain a financial trend. This week, it's the energy crisis. High energy prices have defined the post-pandemic world. They've driven inflation and rate hikes and sent shockwaves through the markets. But is this the beginning of the end? Or is the real energy crisis just about to start? When Europe tried to go cold turkey on Russian gas, after a certain someone brought war back to Europe, the price of wholesale gas went up fast. And that pushed up the price of pretty much everything else. Well, we've dug into the data and found why Europe is so vulnerable to energy price shocks. Just because Europe has avoided blackouts so far doesn't mean the lights will stay on for good. So here are our top energy crisis charts, counting down from five to one. But before we start, a reminder that here at Capital.com, we make explainer videos about trading and economics, giving you insights on the markets so you can make informed trading decisions. We're also a trading platform ourselves, so you can make your trades right on our website or using our app. After this video, you might want to check out our recent explainer on the bond market crash. That's a good one. Let's start back in 1999. Not to party like Prince, but to remember the launch of a new global currency. With the sound of Ode to Joy in the air, the Euro's future felt bright. And it was. Until... The Greek people said no. Decimated the UK economy. The Euro bobbed and the Euro weaved. There were ups and downs, but the currency survived. Debts, defaults, and pandemics. But in the end, the Euro's biggest threat might look like this. Here's the price of natural gas, or Dutch TTF. It started 2022 at just over 88 euros. But in the week before Russia started tightening its gas taps, its price hit 346.5 euros in late August. Given that you're watching this channel, you probably know the war sent gas prices soaring. But perhaps you didn't know the impact it had on the euro. The currency was bouncing along at around 1.2 euros per dollar in early 2022. But Russian tanks crossing the Ukrainian border caused the euro's price to fall like a punctured Chinese spy balloon. Here's the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And here's the reaction of the euro. But now let's add on the price of natural gas. The record highs in Dutch TTF were matched just after by record falls by the euro. We caught up with Capital.com's analyst, Daniela Hathorne, to get her thoughts. Because of the impact that the Russian gas crisis had on the European economy, it had a severe impact of recession, and therefore people were concerned that this spike in energy prices uh, was going to make the European economy less competitive. Like oil and water, a strong euro and expensive natural gas don't mix. So if you want to know whether the euro might be about to get stronger or weaker, you might want to keep your eyes on the price of natural gas. To borrow some dated vernacular, who'd have thought that natural gas could be such a gas? And because of that, we thought it needed another chart. This country over here is the world's biggest exporter of natural gas. So it stands to reason that if it starts supplying less of it, there's gonna be less to go around. Well, yes and no. Here's the EU's storage of natural gas in 2020. It was pretty high, even at the end of the cold winter months. Those exceptionally high levels were caused by a once in a generation event. The COVID pandemic meant people around the world stayed home for months. Trade routes seized up and less energy was needed to move goods around the globe. And as vaccines and boosters rolled out, allowing people to return to work, the EU's reserves fell significantly from the year before. But that didn't cause any alarm bells. It was, after all, just post-pandemic teething pains. Except, as we know, Russia's invasion blew open the cracks in Europe's energy infrastructure. Gas supplies dropped to new lows, and it occurred to Europe's leaders that they might need to start doing this. All of Europe agrees we must cut our dependency on Russian fossil fuels. Europe planned for the worst, 
and started storing gas as fast as they could. I think at the end of December, they were roughly around 82-83% in Europe, which is above the 8% target and above the long-term average. So that, um, that level of storage that held up throughout the winter months has really helped gas prices come down in the last few months. In the end, the milder winter helped ease the energy crisis through December and January. If you're a glass or gas half full kind of person, that means less money flowing to Putin's regime and lower gas prices for the year ahead. Half empty, global warming might be happening faster than we thought. What we saw in Europe and pretty much all of the Northern Hemisphere is a much milder winter than expected. I mean, we saw the months of November and December seeing above 20 degrees in some of the European capitals. Consumption of gas was a lot lower because there was less need to heat houses. It's the land responsible for maple leaves, maple syrup, a surprising number of famous singers, and my accent. Despite its size and musical significance, and my own personal bias, we rarely get to talk about Canada's impact on the markets, eh? But all that changed with the energy shock. Oil and gas make up about 5% of the Canadian economy. For Alberta, it's 21%, and Newfoundland and Labrador, it's 25% which means the strength of the Canadian dollar is uniquely influenced by the price of fossil fuels. And what better to compare it to than the currency of its bigger, brasher, less politically stable brother just south of the border, the American dollar. This line is known as a pairing. It shows the strength of the Canadian dollar against its American counterpart. The higher the line goes, the cheaper American things become for Canadians. So what happens to the humble Canadian loony when energy prices get moving. Well, here's the price of Brent crude. The higher it rises, the stronger the Canadian dollar. But the lower it falls, the gloomier the Canadian economic outlook. Canada is one of the top oil exporters in the world. I think it exports over 3 million barrels of uh, petroleum a day. So it has a real big impact on the economy and therefore it dictates the performance on the Canadian dollar. So it seems like the relationship between the Canadian dollar and the price of Brent crude is stickier than maple syrup. But that's not always the case. 2022's energy shock was so sharp, so great, that supply just couldn't meet demand. The price of Brent crude shot up as Western European countries scrambled to find alternatives to Russian gas. The Canadian dollar followed, but not as fast. The correlation with the Canadian dollar has been a little weaker um, over the last few months. A lot of that, of course, to do with the fact that um, currency traders are also very focused on what central banks are doing. What is the Federal Reserve doing? What is the Bank of Canada doing as well? But in general, um, if we see a sustained bounce in oil prices, you're likely going to see the Canadian dollar catching up to that. Last year, inflation hit the highest rate that we millennials have ever seen. For Generation X, they've had it worse. This is a film about energy, and this is the chapter on inflation. So no prizes for guessing that the first one caused the second one. Inflation has been widespread and energy has been a big contributor to that, as we know. We have to, we have to spend more money on gas and, and petrol, then essentially we have less money to spend, more dis less disposable income. But do you know just how much gas prices pushed up EU inflation? The main inflation rate is how much the price of goods and services change over time. The higher inflation goes, the less things your money can buy. And for about a decade, that rate stayed pretty much the same. This line is the main rate of inflation. It started 2020 ticking over at a fairly stable rate of 1.4%. But then along came COVID. Global governments injected vast sums into their economies to bail out their sinking workforces. The more money people had, the more they could spend. And that meant prices could afford to rise. The EU's main rate of inflation hit almost 11% in November, before falling back to just under 9% at the start of 2023. So what was the main driver of those record highs? Food, alcohol, and tobacco rose steadily to make up 15% of inflation by the start of 2023. Services stayed fairly constant, regardless of wars and pandemics. While non-energy industrial goods, things like pharmaceuticals or electronic goods, only started creeping up at the end of 2022. Now, 
the moment you've been waiting for. Let's take a look at the impact of energy prices. At its peak, energy made up 44% of the EU's inflation rate. But from there, it started falling as the EU began stockpiling gas and finding alternatives, like liquid natural gas. By the end of 2022, the price of energy and its impact on inflation had both started to fall. Energy prices have had a very strong impact, but it hasn't been the only thing driving inflation. It's been a general widespread um, increase in prices that we've seen in the economy. And it's now a case of how quickly is that going to be undone or is it going to be more stubborn on the way down? Suddenly, energy seemed to be getting scarce. Why? It's a lesson that the world learned the hard way during the oil crisis of the 1970s. When the price of energy goes crazy, everything else tends to follow. But is there a plan in place to prevent another energy shock? Well, probably not. The EU, unfortunately, doesn't have many natural resources to rely on like we see in the US and Canada. Until we come to that point where we are self-sufficient and we don't really need that external um, input of energy, then it's going to be a case of the EU is just going to have to go with wholesale prices. And I think that's where a lot of the fears uh, throughout last year is when we were starting to seeing that maybe we were going to be able to get all this energy from other sources because we had pipelines cut out or we had lack of um, resources coming into the economy. So how does Europe currently keep the lights on? It might be dirty and expensive to pull out of the ground, but 12% of Europe's energy demands are met by solid fossil fuels, or coal. The EU's next biggest source of energy has taken a few big PR hits over the years, most notably after one meltdown in Ukraine in the 1980s. But despite a few high-profile disasters, nuclear energy still has its proponents, and France is chief among them. Nuclear energy makes up 13% of the EU's energy demands. So for many, a green energy revolution is the simple solution. It could insulate us from energy price spikes and stop global warming from making the earth uninhabitable along the way. Feels like a win-win, right? But the best things in life don't come easy. Renewables like solar, hydro, and wind power only make up 17% of the EU's energy mix. It's gonna take time and an awful lot of money for renewable energy to take up a bigger slice of the pie. And that leaves our top two. There's a finite supply of both of them, and they're still in big demand. Natural gas comes in second at 24%. But the big winner, providing over a third of European energy, are petroleum products like crude oil. One of the key issues that we saw during COVID and during the energy crisis that stemmed out of Russia and Ukraine, we saw that the fact that all of the investment that we've done in renewable energies meant that we hadn't invested as much money in maintaining pipelines, in maintaining investment in fossil fuels. So there you have it. That's the energy crisis explained in five key market charts. The sheer number of complex and fluctuating global forces required to move energy around the globe makes the price we pay to power our lives particularly prone to shocks and volatility. So this shock may not last forever, but that's cold comfort in the face of the bigger questions surrounding the future of energy. Thanks for watching. Remember that the price of stocks and shares may vary depending on changing market conditions. You can read more of our analysis by clicking on the links in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to stay alerted to our regular chart analysis videos every week and other explainers on big financial topics of the day.